Padeshu Sarvabhutani Pungsha Stiti Pado Viduhu Amritang Kshemam Abhayang Tri Murdno Dhai Murdhasu. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is to be known as the supreme reservoir of all material opulences by one fourth of his energy in which all living entities exist. Deathlessness, fearlessness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems and beyond the material coverings. This slide shows Lord Mahavishnu. This is Lord Mahavishnu lying in the causal ocean. And from the pores of his body, he emanates so many material universes. Each one of these gradually grows until it contains all the elements and all the ingredients of the material universe. This is a cutaway view of one of the universes, which is not strictly accurate because the open space inside of the universe is covered by a shell of material elements which extends about oh a thousand times or maybe ten thousand times the diameter of the opening in the middle. But anyway, uh, each material universe is like an egg and inside the egg there is another ocean called the Garbodaka Ocean. And there the Lord lies down on the Sheshanaga as we saw earlier and there's Lakshmi serving him and there's Lord Brahma on the lotus flower and from Lord Brahma uh, transcendental sound is emanating which creates all the material planets and stars and all the uh, living entities all the species of life and so on so this is how the creation is accomplished and this is all described very detailed way in Srimad Bhagavatam However, the spiritual world, which is not really shown here, is beyond all these distinctions of three modes of nature. It's in the transcendental category, divyam, uh, transcendental energy, spiritual energy. Therefore, it's all eternal. The scriptures say, pravartate yatra rajas tamas teo, satvang cha mishram na chakala vikramaha. Na yatra maya kimuta pare harer, anuvrata yatra sura surar chitaha. In that personal abode of the Lord, the material modes of ignorance and passion do not prevail, nor is there any of the influence of goodness. There is no predominance of the influence of time, so what to speak of the illusory external energy? It cannot enter that region. Without discrimination, both demigods and demons worship the Lord as devotees. That means anybody can become a devotee. Anybody can go to the spiritual world, whether a demigod or a demon. Huh? The Lord is always waiting to accept our service. He's always willing to set us free. In fact, he calls every living entity through the scriptures to come and worship him and get freedom from the pangs of the material energy. So this is the goal, which is stated very clearly right in the beginning of Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra. Uh, it's not a mysterious thing. It's also discussed very uh, plainly in Bhagavad Gita. The goal of human life is to get out of this material world and attain the spiritual world, which is eternal. So how do we do that? Because right now we're stuck in time. Well, first of all, we have to understand how time is operating. Time is operating through three modes. The three modes of material nature. Goodness, passion, and ignorance, or sattva, rajas, and tamas. Above those three modes is the transcendental realm. Uh, divyam, uh, satyang param the highest destination. So we have to understand how to get out of time and into eternity, which has no beginning and no end. 
Uh, this is our challenge as students of the esoteric teaching on a personal level and as astrologers when dealing with our clients. How do we get them to see past this trap of material nature and actually attain their freedom that's natural to the spirit soul? Well, we have to get them to attain self-realization. There's another shot of uh, Lord Vishnu as Paramatma. You see, he's seated on the lotus flower of the heart. And we'll see in our next session how the different parts of the body of the Lord are reflected in the different planetary systems and the different constellations or Rashis and how different incarnations of the Lord are reflected in the different planets or Grahas that seize these Rashis. Uh, graha means seize, seizing, grabbing. So uh, the Grahas, just like uh, I explained in one place, the astrological chart is like a theatrical set, like a stage with many houses, let's say a street scene. And the planets are like people who inhabit these houses and they go up and down the street and they enter into different houses and they have different relationships with one another and they perform different activities. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of these aspects of the uh, astrological chart are actually parts of the body of the Mahapurusha. We have to understand this fundamental fact Otherwise, the rest of Jyotish makes no sense. Well, it might make sense, but only in a material way. Uh, and this is one of the big mistakes that I see in all Western teachings of Jyotish. They don't begin from the fundamentals that all the signs and planets are reflections of the body of the Lord or different aspects of the Lord. Not understanding this, one would have a very hard time seeing how the qualities of the various signs and planets are derived. So therefore, we're following Parashara. We're not following any mundane or modern authorities. Uh, no uh, Western or materialistic interpretations of astrology or Jyotish. We're following the original Vedic model, which is based on the theistic conception that the stars, planets, signs, houses, and so forth, are all different manifestations of the body of the Lord.